Good afternoon and welcome to our June Keys penguin habitat. My name is Frankie and I'm an aviculturist here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. And right now we're doing our third and final penguin feed for our Magellanic penguin. Good afternoon, welcome to our June Keys penguin habitat. My name is Frankie and I'm an aviculturist here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. And we just finished up our final feeding of the day for our Magellanic penguins. And I was offering some herring and capelin. We did go through all of the capelin for the day, but I do have some leftover herring. And this is a pretty small herring. They can get pretty large, about double the size of that at least. And these penguins are able to take these fish down whole because they have muscles and spines that go down their throat that allow the fish to s smoothly slide down. So right now we're in our molting season, so a lot of our birds are bulking up for that molt. So they have eaten a lot today, and we will probably see that again for the next several days until we start to see some molting animals. And uh, they do really get pretty large once they bulk up. If you can see Gats sitting over there, kind of alone on that rock, he's really large, and we think he's going to start molting very soon. And the reason that they do molt is so that they is so that they are able to sustain energy while they are on land. Molting is replacing all of their feathers, which then takes away all of their waterproofing, and therefore they can't be in the water hunting or hunting and catching fish for themselves. So they do bulk up in order to kind of live off of those calories for several weeks, between five and six weeks, while they gather all of their feathers, make them nice and waterproofed again, and then they can go back in the water and begin their migration period. We do have 23 birds on this habitat, all of which are different and have a little bit of a different personality. And so we are lucky enough to get to know each and every one of them on a pretty individual basis, so it's really easy for us to know if anything abnormal happens, we can catch something immediately and take care of that with our round-the-clock veterinary service. Now if you look behind me, we do have nine burrows behind me and to the left of me, and each and every one of those are occupied by mating pairs or breeding pairs and two of those burrows are filled with some of our Brazilian rescues actually three of those burrows we have four Brazilian rescues two of them are together Kate and Avery and then Robbie and Roxy are also Brazilian rescues but they aren't with each other they have different mates but the four of them well six of them really occupy one two three the first three burrows on this side over here and they kind of have dominated that space, and we're really grateful for these Brazilian rescues because they um, are really important to our species survival plan. A species survival plan is what allows zoos and aquariums. Nope. They are what allows zoos and aquariums to maintain these populations within our institutions and not have to utilize any genetics from the wild. But since we do have those Brazilian rescues. They're considered founder birds, and they um, really allow the genetics to be more varied than to have the internalized uh, families just going down the lines within institutions. Now, why are they Brazilian rescues? They just happened to follow the wrong school of fish too far north about eight or nine years ago. And unfortunately, 16 of the 30 birds were deemed non-releasable, and we were opening up our habitat just around that same time, and we were able to take in those four, while the other birds went to other facilities throughout the United States. Now, I am going to be wrapping up this feed right now, but if you're interested in figuring out which bird you may have connected with recently, we do have signs on both sides of the habitat that will have color-coded tags. Each of the birds has a flipper on either their left or right side. Left being meaning that it's a female, right meaning that it's a male. And if you are interested in figuring out who is who, you can check out those signs. If you do find a bird without a band, that is because it's going to be molting soon. I mentioned earlier that they will bulk up before they molt. Well, with that bulk, they get a little too swollen, and we want to make sure there's no restriction in their flippers. So we'll cut those bands off for about six weeks, and once they're fully molted and waterproofed again, we'll put those bands back on. But just for reference, I have, let's see, Paddles is, is about to jump in the water over here. Kate is on the deck. She's one of our Brazilian rescues, and whatever's right in front of me. And if you check, take a look at, let's see... 
I think you have Wally right in front of you over there, and he's white, blue, orange, the combination of that. And he's one of our younger birds along with Dee and Cleo, and they all hatched the summer of 2018. We did not have any chicks summer of 2019, so these ones are our youngsters. Dee's actually right up here with me, and she's done eating for the day. But, um, yeah, I want to thank you all so much for coming out uh, without your support we wouldn't be able to do what we do here so again thank you for coming out and let anyone in a blue polo know if you have any questions at all